Hi, uh, I'm Paula Tähtinen from Turku, Finland. And the overall aim of my uh, fellowship project was to study the dynamics of Streptococcus pneumonia colonization in children with acute otitis media. I have nothing to disclose. The nasopharyngeal colonization of strep pneumo is the first step in the pathogenesis of acute otitis media. Several studies have shown that the carriage duration varies by serotype and it's decreased by age. They have shown that nasopharyngeal carriage of strep pneumo after antimicrobial treatment is associated with clinical recurrence of AOM, even though the uh, pathogen was evacu evacuated from the middle year. However, little is known of which genes of strep pneumo are associated with persistence and the development of AOM. Our aim was to study whether strains of strep pneumo that persist in the nasopharynx differ from those that do not persist. We also wanted to see if there are any changes over time in the genomes uh, of persistent strains of, of strep pneumo. We also wanted to study whether strains of strep pneumo that are related to AOM differ from those that are not related to AOM. The strains that we used came from uh, 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 children who participated in our AOM treatment trial. We followed the children for at least two months and took repeated nasopharyngeal samples at follow-up visits. Altogether, 300 children had repeated nasopharyngeal samples taken and 177 of them had strep pneumo detected in their nasopharynx on day one. 31 of them had the same serotype of strep pneumo for at least 45 days. And these were defined as persistent strains. Our multivariable model showed that antimicrobial treatment decreased the risk for persistent carriage, and serotype 35B increased the risk for persistent carriage. That's why we started by sequencing the serotype 35B strains. We used the Illumina platform for the sequencing and did the de novo assembly. We annotated the genomes in a RAST and uh, made the comparison in a seed viewer. Any findings that we had, we confirmed our findings using the BLAST and BRIC programs. And here we can see an example of a one child who had a persistent 35B strain in her nasopharynx. She had AOM at study entry. She was randomized to the placebo group and her ears became healthy by day 29. And here, uh, this is the brick image uh, of, of the genomic comparison of the strains from that child. She had the stra same strain until day 177, and we used that strain as a comparison, as a reference strain. And in here, you can see in purple is the day one strain, in yellow is day eight strain, in uh, blue is day 15 strain, and so on. The darker the color, the more identical uh, the strains were. And as you can see here, there are very few gaps here in the genomes, meaning that there were very few changes that happened over time. Another patient with persistent 35B had a bit different clinical course. He had several relapses and several antimicrobial treatments. But if you look at the genomes, once again, there are very few changes that happen over time. Next, we compared the genomes of persistent strains and non-persistent strains of the same serotype. There were these certain genes that seemed to be more common among strains with persistent carriage. 
However, the results weren't consistent across different serotypes. In our microtiter plate biofilm assay, we saw that persistent strains were better biofilm producers than the non-persistent strains. The overall bacteria growth didn't differ between persistent and non-persistent strains. Dr. Stephen Pelton's research group in Boston Medical Center, they have a, a, a chinchilla model for acute otitis media. Interestingly, they had found that there were two uh, invasive clinical strains of serotype 33F that were unable to cause AOM in a chinchilla model. Uh, this uh, genomic analysis of these strains show that uh, this specific toxin-antitoxin system and l fucolokinase seem to be associated with the lack of, of virulence. And this is the genomic comparison of these avirulent 33F strains that are shown here in blue and other clinical strains that were all able to cause otitis media in a chinchilla model. And here you can see the severity of the otitis media in chinchilla model. All these other strains had this PGAT island except the Averland 33F strains. We also screened our serotype 35Bs for these candidate genes. In this data set, all strains had at least one of these candidate genes present. And the presence of or absence of, of virulence genes seemed to be more related to the multilocal sequence type than the severity of the disease. Our comparison of subsequent strains from children who developed AOM during the follow-up showed no specific genes associated with the development of AOM. In conclusion, we can say that serotype 35B seems to increase the risk for persistent carrots even after adjusting for antimicrobial treatment and penicillin resistant. There are very few changes that happen over time in the genomes of persistent strains of strep pneumo. And in vitro biofilm formation distinguishes persistent strains of strep pneuma from those that are cleared from the nasal pharynx. We found out that there are these specific toxin antitoxin systems and l fucolokinase that seem to be associated with the development of AOM. However, further studies are needed to evaluate the role of persistent strep pneuma strains in the multimicrobial environment of the upper respiratory tract. Finally, I would like to thank the ESPIT for giving me this uh, fellowship that allowed me to continue the research work after my PhD degrees. And of course, I would like to thank my collaborators, both in Turku and in Boston. Thank you.